poor, poor hyperbole, very poor hyperbole. And you would expect much better from someone of Kurt Franklin's stature, especially in the gospel music industry um, to not make mistakes like that. At, at worst, it's, it's full out blasphemy. All right, guys, glad to have you guys with me. Y'all welcome to The Furnished Mind. My name is James. We have uh, Tyler Scoop, Osman Jama, Chankwith Gache, and Chris Hale. We're just going to be discussing some, some culture, some politics, and of course, some theology. Um, and of course, I'm just going to give the floor to these guys to share some ideas. That way we have a uh, diversity of uh, opinion, thoughts, um, worldviews. Um, let's go ahead and just get started. Like Big and Jay and Nas, the greatest cake of both. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. Like Big and Jay and Nas, the greatest cake of both. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. All right, so the first thing we're going to discuss is uh, Kirk Franklin. Uh, the BT Hip Hop Awards. Obviously, Kirk Franklin is known as one of the greatest modern uh, gospel singers um, of all time. Um, he got in a little bit of trouble. He made some uh, <laughs> some very curious claims about uh, who the goat, the lion, and the lamb is. Uh, his lyrics were, the lion and the lamb would bow down to the goat. And I wanted to know from you guys, is that just hyperbole? Um, is that part of the art form? Um, or is that sacrilegious? Is that blasphemous? Um, so I'm just going to open up the floor to you guys. You guys let me know. Um, I want to start with Chang. I want to start with you, man. <clears throat> I was hoping you weren't going to start with me, man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this is tough, man. Um, did he have a separate interview where he like, he gave an explanation for for why he used the terms and phrase that he, phrases that he used? Yeah. So, Leah, let me provide some context. Um, he posted a tweet after the backlash. Um, he claimed it was hyperbole. He used uh, GOAT as a metaphor, obviously the acronym greatest of all time. He was trying to say... The lion and the lamb, which represented like Jay Z, Nas, Biggie, who are lions of their field, they're gonna bow down to the goat, meaning Jesus, the greatest of all time. That was his claim. But biblically, we understand that the goat or the goat head has always represented a demonic entity known as Baphomet, um, and that's where the lines were blurred. So people are saying, can you, as a theologian, blur those lines in the name of art? Or is theology, theology, you just have to keep it black and white. That's complex, man. Um, the heavy hitters, Mike Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there's there's gray area, man. Um, it, I, I agree that it is confusing. Uh, I mean, if we classically understand traditionally, you know, in Chris, Christian thought, that lion and lamb is supposed to depict Jesus, refer to Jesus. <clears throat> I, I don't think it was, it was really wise, you know, or, or helpful for that matter to muddle the waters, you know, and, and use that in a way to, as an analogy, you know, to, you know, for comparison uh, with, uh, with these artists. I don't think that was, I just don't think that really would fit, you know, and, um, it's very confusing to me. Um, I, at best, I, I want to be charitable to him. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to malign his intentions. I don't want to think that he's, you know, trying to be malicious or deceitful, you know, he's trying to deceive people or, um, but at, at, it's confusing. Um, not very helpful. I guess I don't, I haven't really spent a whole lot of time trying to explore it um i mean i'm sure there's probably like finer details under the surface you know um that we could we could examine but uh that's my take on it okay all right let me let me pass it to uh chris hale i want to hear your two cents on that <laughs> at at best it's poor poor hyperbole very poor hyperbole and you would expect much better from someone of Kurt Franklin's stature, especially in the gospel music industry um, to not make mistakes like that. At, 
at worst, it's, it's full out blasphemy. Um, mm. In your video that you did, James, you even showed his tweet that he had to explain the comparison he was trying to make, trying to mm -hmm. compare uh, Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, and taking that, comparing that to the lime and lamb and saying, well, eventually Jay-Z, Biggie, and Nas, they're all going to bow down before Christ. There's a, there's a part truth in that. Yes, everyone eventually will bow a knee before Christ. But to make the comparison of Jay-Z and Nas as the lion and the lamb, ooh, that's, there's only one lion and the lamb, that's Christ. He is the lion of Judah. That's how he's portrayed in the Old Testament. New Testament is portrayed as the lamb of God. Uh, John the Baptist even says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So to compare men to Christ, that's that's crossing the line. And someone, like I said, someone of Kurt Franklin's stature, um, his history in the church and in the gospel music verse should know that. It's and I'm not someone who likes to take that artistic expression. I think theology needs to say theology. You don't go and take something and say, well, Jesus Christ is like this, or God is like this, when it's not how it's represented in Holy Scripture. That is walking a very dangerous ground where people can easily be deceived. I mean, just hearing him say that without knowing the background, yeah, that, that sounded really bad. Obviously, now knowing what he was trying to communicate I would say he did it in poor taste. And as a lyricist myself, you have to be very careful when you try to play these word games in your lyrics, that they don't get misconstrued, that they don't somehow get taste, taken in a context that you did not really mean for it to go. So it's really important that you try and stay truthful to what is in scripture without trying to take so much artistic liberty with it and thinking it sounds good. Just, just present the gospel, present who God is, just how scripture says, without having to make it more creative, make it more sound better. Just leave scripture how it is, point blank. All right, my man, Osman Jama. I, I agree with Chris in a lot of ways, um, but my one cat caveat would be Paul on Mars Hill using the context of what the culture knows as a way to point them to the unknown God, the statue that they had and worship an unknown God and saying that, let me tell you about that unknown God that you don't know about who's supreme overall. Um, so what it, music and art in every facet reflects the creator god is referred to that he creates we see the beauty of nature we, we see the beauty of just as, as we study the cosmos we we realize how more and more it's fine-tuned and and so in that essence art can inspire and move people but at the same time i i, I agree with chris like he made bad art <laughs> And let's just call it that. Like it's, it's it was rooted in in a, a good I maybe a good intentions, but intentions doesn't mean that it came it came through as good theology. And I think that was the issue for me. It's 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 the we use go in the sense of greatest of all time. Yeah, it's a reference of being really good in your field, um, but at the same time, like scripturally, like goats is not a good imagery of the greatest of all time for us it's it's it is the lamb like so if you were to say the goats would bow down to the lamb maybe then i would have had less issue with his line but he chose to do the opposite direction he chose to use a man-centric viewpoint of greatness and try to now instill that onto christ <coughs> so yeah tyler scoop go ahead Right. Minority. I'm so, kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> so for me, I think Chang had a really good point about uh, 
trying to be charitable to him, you know, show him <laughs> because we all make, make missteps. But I do think that uh, Chris summarized exactly kind of what I was going to say in, in a sense as well, that at, at best, it's, it's a very poor choice of words and poor hyperbole. At worst, it's blasphemy. And I, I lean toward the more obvious sentiment that it, it is blasphemous to, uh, to describe any human in such a way that they, they would be comparable to the line of the law. And uh, it, it's poor imagery to, to reverse the relationship. Um, as far as the, the use of the term goat, I don't, I don't know that the invocation of the term goat is supposed to consciously mean anything in relation to Baphomet, but rather uh, one thing that shouldn't have escaped him was, uh, what, what is it, Rome? I don't even remember what verse it is, but uh, where we're told that he'll separate the, the sheep from the goats. And uh, that's something that I think that would occur to anyone. So, you know, it's, it's kind of an inexcusable oversight, but the, the other issue that I think I can weigh in on here differently that other people haven't really already, already um, talked about well is uh, that as a musician, you can see that any, of, any, any musician wants to receive commercial recognition and commercial success, especially, you know, when you're coming from a field that is not taken terribly seriously. Uh, so gospel music, uh, not taken as seriously as, say, commercially successful ones. And so I think that it could have been nothing other than a conscious choice to try to relate the language. And uh, I think it's, it's selling out. Uh, I think it's selling out your beliefs so as to uh, a appeal to your audience. And Osman, you had a good point that I hadn't considered about... Uh, relating to the audience in the culture in which they live uh, to point to an unknown God to them. That's a good point and it's worth consideration. Uh, it's still in my mind is, is blasphemous and you know, really inexcusable from a theological point of view. And anyone who's attended the church for more than a year is enough of a theologian to understand the parallels that they're pointing to. So. Uh, like I said, I think he, he sold out with that statement, and I think it's a conscious decision, and it's inexcusable. Okay. Like, <clears throat> let, me, let me challenge one thing that you said um, about the direct link between the goat and Baphomet. Um, so if you go on the Church of Satan's website, I did that, unfortunately, but just, <laughs> just for research purposes, um, one of the pillars of their church is, is symbolized by using the goat head figure. Um, everybody's seen it before, up the one hand, one, one hand up, one hand down. Um, and it's Andromedus in nature, of course. Um, the goat head is so synonymous with the Church of Satan that there was a movie on Netflix four years ago that used the goat head figure. The Church of Satan sued that producer for copyright infringement and won. Wow. So, and under the pillars of Satanism, this is synonymous with their doctrine. Baphomet, the goat head symbol, that is real and tangible to them and in, in within their doctrine. So I know in the Christian Bible, I mean, I understand what you're saying is not as clear and as distinct. Obviously, there are clues that we get left behind, but the Church of Satan finishes that half for me. If it, it completes that argument for me that this is something that is synonymous with who Satan is. And if it's used in a biblical uh, context, I believe it to be uh, blasphemous in nature. Uh, and, I, and I agree with a lot of the points that you guys made as well. I, I do believe, especially as a musician, the art form in and of itself, it's, it's used to, of course, to emulate God, emulate culture, um, and to sometimes give a clearer image than just mere words can do. Um, but I would also have to agree that I think this crossed the line and I, it entered into a blasphemous territory, in my opinion. I understand what his idea behind it, but as somebody who's been in the industry for so long on the Christian side, his wisdom should have told him better. He should have known better. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, you, that video you sent, it was a music video, right? And uh, he at one point, he's got like one hand up and one hand down, doesn't he? That didn't occur to me until you just said it right there. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't want to bring that up, but I did notice it. But I was like, maybe coincidence. So. Yeah. Thank you.